You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. All right, everybody, that music can mean only one thing. It is time, once again, for Options Playbook Radio, the program here on the Options Insider Radio Network, where we break down the sometimes intimidating world of options into easy-to-understand offensive and defensive plays that you guys can utilize in your own portfolios. My name is Mark Longo from the aforementioned network as well as from TheOptionsInsider.com. But if you're saying to yourself, self, he's not the author of the Options Playbook. He's not the usual guy on the mic for this program. You are correct. So allow me to introduce your usual co-host, or I should say, really, your usual host, (laughs) and the author of the titular Options Playbook, Mr. Brian Overby, the senior options analyst, a.k.a. the options guy over there at Ally Invest. Mr. Overby, welcome back to your own program, sir. Well, thank you, Mark. Uh, it's wonderful to be back, and I always love when you join me because that usually means that we get a chance to answer some of these listener questions. And I see a lot of them out there, especially with what has happened in oil. Uh, that has brought up a lot of questions. You have such an astute uh, l- group of listeners, and then we have such, so many great questions just around that overall. And we actually recently did a podcast on the USO. Uh, once again, we talked a little bit about doing long straddles and in, in, in some of these underlyings, which was just kind Kind of, kind of crazy overall, but you know that it is what it is. So, with that said, I think Mark, it's time to huddle up. It's time to huddle up and answer questions about your favorite options plays. Submit your questions via twittercom options, facebookcom insider or questions at theoptionsinsider.com. All right, everybody, let's get to as many of you guys and gals as we can here on the program. Let's dive right in. First off, we got a question from SD. SD wants to know, he says this is in response to episode 305, which, uh, well, we'll get to that. We'll see what that's talking about. He says, I like, I like it. <laughs> First off, I like it. So I guess, Brian, he likes what you're talking about there at episode 305. But he wants to know, how do you manage the short call on April 17th if it's below the strike do you let it expire? What will you do if it's above the strike? And I have so many shows in the network, Brian. I had to go refresh myself to see what it is you were talking about on episode 305. That was, of course, a safer way to get long Microsoft and other stocks. So you talked about one of your favorite strategies to get a little bit long exposure in Microsoft. So, Brian, Mr. SD wants to know about how you manage the short call leg on that Microsoft trade and perhaps others where you utilize a similar strategy, sir. All right. So I think that in general, it wasn't a fig leaf that we were talking about. 
It was like a shorter term fig leaf because if you go way out in time, options are just so expensive right along with their underlyings overall. Um, so when we talked about the short call on April 17th, how do you manage the short call? The biggest thing that you do if you're using a strategy like the fig leaf where you're buying a longer term option and selling a shorter term option against it, um, in that scenario, you just want to make sure that if the stock gets to the short strike, you are aware. So you want to, first of all, set an alert. If that happens, and that happens uh, sooner than you expect, in other words, it happens before that expiration date, well, at that point in time, you got a choice to make. If it has gotten to that short call, well, you should have a profit. So some might just say, I'm just going to get out. Others might think about rolling that position. And inside the Options Playbook website and also the Options Playbook, there's a section called Managing and specifically how to roll covered calls. And I'll give you some guidelines behind it. But the biggest thing is, is when it gets to your short strike, you need to do something. Don't let it get too far in the money. If that gets to your short strike and continues on up and say, let's now you're three, four, five points in the money, you're, uh, you could actually end up being down on that position. The deeper it gets in the money, even though you are right on your longer term option, there's a point where the short term option will move faster and harder against you than the long-term option will benefit you. So when it gets to your short strike, do something. Close out the position, roll the position, or you can just close the option contract, close the call option. It's going to cost you a little bit to do that, but that's another alternative, and then you just remain long on that position. But yeah, it's an interesting way to look at it. And what's really funny about this, Mark, is I talked about these type of strategies prior to to 2020 coming in on different ways because we just had a lot of froth in the marketplace. Like ideally, I think I talked about buying a leap, sell, selling your Apple and buying a leap option contract just to manage your risk. But then you look at that and you're like saying, God, if I buy that leap option, that's you know, 10, 15% of the stock price. I don't want to do that. And guess what? Uh, Apple and all these other stocks went down more than that overall, but now they've all bounced back. So that's where we're at. So thank you so much for the question, SD. And I, I appreciate that because it is, it is an interest. These, uh, these strategies are just very here and now relative uh, to, to before uh, everything that happened with the coronavirus. Yeah, we're seeing SD and it seems like a lot more coming in via YouTube. So if you're enjoying consuming the program that way, keep it up. Again, it was, we never intended when we first started making these shows for them to go out on YouTube, but it's just one of the many platforms that we service now. And you guys seem to be enjoying it out there. So if you're liking it on YouTube, keep it up. Keep the comments coming. This next one doesn't come from YouTube, though. It comes from uh, iTunes. Like you're getting a little iTunes love here, Brian. By the way, if you want to have a question, don't leave those in iTunes or places like that because – that's usually just for reviews. If you have a question, I, we don't check the iTunes and things that often. So if you have a question, there's other more timely ways uh, to reach out. But Harold just has some love, Brian. He says, five stars. <laughs> great podcast. Awesome podcast. Ooh, great and awesome. Well, I like that. Like the way Brian breaks it down into bite-sized bits of information that is easily digestible. Keep up the great work and thank you. So there you go, Brian. Harold, giving you a little iTunes love there on the old OPR, sir. Good old Uncle Harold coming through for me again. LOL. <laughs> yes, always good for a nice five star review uh, from uh, Uncle Harold. Well, no, I, I, I you got to have the good. You know, you got to take some of the good every once in a while, and it, and it makes me feel great to see comments like this and see the five stars. It's just wonderful. It wants you to, I want you to come back every week and just, you know, I really enjoy what I do, and uh, this podcast is one of my favorite things to do every week. Well, you guys, clearly from what we've been seeing of late, you guys are enjoying it even more than ever. You've always enjoyed it. Now you're enjoying it even more. So we, we like to see that. Uh, we'll keep Brian uh, coming at you hot and heavy with a lot of great stuff. All right, more questions about specific episodes, Brian. I believe this is one that's coming in from YouTube, I believe, as well. Tom, Tom Chung, he wants to know about episode 309, which was betting on big crude movement with an MRO straddle. That was from back on April 15th, so tax day. He wants to know, Brian, why would you leg in or sell options against the momentum? Why not the other side of the straddle? And he puts in parentheses, 
going with the trend. I know you've been playing with some interesting straddle alternatives and options, pun intended, out there. You did one in USO recently, which was a home run. I know you were playing in other things like MRO now. So maybe maybe do a quick refresher on what the strategy was you were talking about there, Brian. And then, as Tom wants to know, why would you sell options against the momentum? Okay, so in this instance, we actually didn't talk about an MRO straddle. But as you know, Mark, a lot of times we say, these are paper trades. So I said... We have MRO, and if I recall, if I, I'm not going to be exact on it, but MRO was trading around $4, and the USO was trading around 4 and a half. And I said it would just be interesting to look at we have two – uh, underlyings that are trading within the $4 range. And let's look at doing a long straddle in each of them. I would lean towards the USO was basically the, 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 the theme just because of, I feel like volatility and something that tr- that follows futures contracts is a little bit more true than uh, a, a, an underlying company. But obviously in hindsight, both of them have moved quite a bit. Okay. So then the quench- question in the show, I said implied volatilities are higher specifically in USO than the first time we talked about a straddle. In this show, I think we did, we called it a rinse and repeat. Um, the USO had already made big moves. None of the, not a, a lot of the major news was not out. Little did we know that it was, that oil was going to go below zero at that point in time when we looked at doing it and it did happen. But with that said, so because the implied volatility is so high, we're going to have to pay up for a shorter term trade. So I think the first time around we looked at the USO it was a little bit more expensive. Maybe we paid, uh, gosh, a dollar and a half for the trade. And now in this one, we were looking at $2 for about the same time frame, about two weeks out. So, so I said, because we got to pay that inflated vol, now I'm, I, those numbers don't hold me to those exactly, but, but the, I know what the thought was. Because we had to pay that inflated vol, if it starts going in my direction, I may sell something that's out of the money that would make me profitable and help bring some of those costs in. So in this instance, USO went down. So it was at four and a half. And before I turned around, it was trading at three. Maybe I would have sold the two and a half or sold the two just because uh, it now not in regards to what's going on in the market, but I might do that because I could still bring in so much time premium. And then when you do that, right, you still got some upside, if it continues on down, but then you're really hoping that, okay, I'm going to take some of the money off the table. Hopefully I get a good chunk of it. And now maybe the underlying might go back up. So I actually think, what's the date today? I actually think that that, that straddle might still be alive because I think we did like uh, May, uh, gosh, 8th or May 15th expiration when we were looking at it. So um, I would have got out, I, you know, obviously with the way that's moved, I, I would have probably just got out of the trade overall, definitely on the put side. But it's but it's interesting. And once again, not meant to be a recommendation. This is the time, and I sold this pretty hard, and I even Mark and I haven't had these discussions in that. I actually think implied volatilities could go higher. Uh, as opposed to lower. And so that's what, what the long straddle bets are on. Uh, the, when we started talking about them in Boeing, when we first looked at, at, at those types of underlyings where there's some major news that could come out, and the oil story is not over with yet, but now the volatility has came back into it, right? So now you're not getting away with a quote-unquote cheaper straddle because all the stuff has happened. And we figured out that futures, the near-term futures could actually go negative. And that's what happened in the WTI, the West Texas oil futures contract. All right. I got so many here, Brian. Let's see if we can get more love coming in. This I think this is also from YouTube. A lot of YouTube love here. Uh, this comes from Nick. This is in response to episode 308, which was your FOMO put spread in Allstate. He just said, cool video. Keep it up, dude. 
<laughs> I'm guessing Nick's a surfer or something, Brian. What do you think? <laughs> well, yeah, definitely, without a doubt. Keep it up, dude. I, I do appreciate it. But uh, yeah, we're 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 FOMOing and and put spreads in Allstate. And I got to give kudos once again to Allstate. And that came up in the video. You know, they people aren't driving, and so they came on out and they did what insurance companies are really supposed to do. Uh, they're not having as many accidents, and they gave some of their money back to their clients. So that trade was actually just a call out to be able to say, hey, Allstate has done this, and how about the rest of you insurance companies do it too it could really help out in this time period but i don't think anybody really listened to me from the other insurance companies but <laughs> i think a few overall, them, I think like geico and a few others might have done that to- there's a few a few of the big boys have, have stepped up overall but yeah so just interesting uh they're all uh, too busy getting payroll loans right and uh, small business loans and everything <laughs> else. <laughs> yeah well well nobody's having car accidents yeah <laughs> yeah there you go all right we won't get political we'll just keep on rolling here you touched on a lot of like, people obviously have crude on the brain brian so does our next listener with the handle of bearish i like that bearish wants to know does brian think uso is going away uso of course the much maligned including by us on the network many times uh, franken product as i've called it in the past because it's one of these many products that attempts to replicate you used to be a front month future not so much anymore out there in wti actually that was a good thing though because if they had replicated a front month we saw what happened to the front month future last week it actually went negative Uh, so uso has been doing a lot of machinations to keep that product rolling pun intended out there including as of today doing an i believe an eight for one reverse stock split so coming into today uh, the stock was actually at about an 18 out there so if you're used to seeing it at a two and change it has reverse split Your, your eyes are not not deceiving you. It, has, it hasn't rallied all that way. It's just a reverse split out there. But still a de- decent little pop today, up about 5.5% given all the move we saw out there in crude oil. But as Brian wants to know, he wants, or as Beerish wants to know, does Brian think USO is going away? Before you answer, Brian, I will give a – we had a similar question to we, we asked to our audience last week. We asked you guys, you know, the crude oil debacle has spread into popular energy ETPs like USO. This has led some of you to ask us if we think – it's going to join the, the dustbin of history that includes products like XIV. Uh, so we put it to you. Do you think USO will be trading at the end of the year? It was actually surprisingly contentious, Brian. It ended up being about 55% to yes and 45% for no. I've waited on this myself. I'm curious what your thoughts are on this, Brian. Do you think USO is going to go the way of the dodo or it's going to hang out? I don't know if I can partake in this one, but I do have a lot of thoughts just overall because I did actually this week inside Ally Invest put out a, a, a note to our to all of our clients that were willing to listen, just talking a little bit about the roll risk and what happens with USO. And in the, the little note that we put out to our clients overall, just talked about the roll risk. I mean, as far as the USO is concerned, it, money isn't drying up. If anything, they're increasing the amount of money that's coming into it. It's it's an insane dollar amount that actually moves the futures when they when those products are coming in. And recently, they've announced that they've adjusted some of the terms and conditions of their uh, ETN exchange traded note to allow them to manage that future position a little bit better. And I'm sure it had a lot to do with the front month future going to a negative number. This this year, but it's a it's a true risk because if you look at the way the futures are, especially nowadays, usually the front month is going to be trading at a lower price than the back month, and so every time you're doing that roll, you're ideally by selling a lower priced uh, asset or security or future and buying a higher price one. So that is a true cost that actually gets put into the fund overall. And there's not much that they can really do about it because of the way they are structured overall. Um, There's an Invesco fund that does this and they give them a little bit more flexibility, but it's something true. If you're going to stay in that futures contract and you're trying to make this into an actual tradable asset, it's a true risk that can happen. And, and, you know, there is, there are times when the front month might have a huge demand and you can't always say that this is always going to be a losing transaction, but that's what has driven the USO price down um, relative to the spot price or to the future price. It just hasn't moved. Uh, it, it sometimes doesn't move quite like the actual barrel of oil. So one of the better things, if you really want to invest in oil is to go 
fill up your pool in the backyard, right? And actually own that asset and then find a buyer for it at a later date once demand increases. But uh, they got, I, I actually saw a, a joke with all the people in Texas filling up the, the their backyard pools because there are a lot of pools in Texas and filling them all up with oil because they didn't know what to do with it. And that was part of the big issue there is that they just didn't have any place to store it as opposed to the Brent crude where they actually have tankers. They just pull in another tank tanker and they fill that tanker up, send it out to sea and let it float and then bring another one in. So that's why that futures contract, the Brent crew, didn't get hit as hard. And then what did we see? We saw tanker stocks skyrocket and they're still up quite a bit. They're still doing pretty well and they probably will continue to do well up in, well, I I don't want to make a recommendation overall, but until till that demand and somebody starts wanting that oil, they, you know, they're getting paid for just sitting out in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, you know, I can't argue with any of that. You know, we've said many times on uh, all of our shows, including TWIFO. And if you want a deep dive into what's going on with USO and WTI, check out our TWIFO This Week in Futures Options program that we do with CME and FTSE Russell out there every week, listeners, because we did a deep dive into that this week. So the, the best way to get exposure is, of course, the direct way. Maybe not this past week where it went negative 40 handles. Uh, that was an interesting development. I will say this, you know, USO has made some interesting maneuvers, the, the folks that issue it in an attempt to keep this product afloat, which is why... On this poll here, I weighed in on, yes, it will be still trading at the end of the year because they are doing the things that you didn't see with an XIV in Barclays. They didn't take the steps. They pretty much just shut it down. Now, Barclays had other issues going on, working against them, other forces arrayed against them. USL, though, they've moved away from just the front month now. They are they started off with 20% exposure to second month and then the front month, and they started moving beyond the futures curve down all the way out to September and beyond. I've heard they're even out into next year now at this point. So they have spread their exposure out to much saner contracts that are much less subject to the super contango that is going on out there, which they've changed their role schedule, so they're not doing it in such a predictable fashion anymore, so they can't get front run and picked off in that sense. And they are using a lot of other things, OTC product swaps, to try to get that exposure and keep this product alive. Not the least of which, of course, now being this reverse split. That's another step they're taking to keep this product alive. So they have a lot vested in this product A lot of people out there literally have a lot of money invested in this product as well. So I do think these maneuvers are the kind of things you would do if you wanted to keep this product sane. If you wanted to have it blow up, then yeah, just keep rolling at the front month every like clockwork every month and watch that super contango annihilate you all the way down to zero. They are taking the steps they need uh, to avoid that. So I am glad to see us. I I voted yes in that. All right. I think with that conversation – about crude oil, which is extensive. You guys have a lot of questions. Keep them coming. I think maybe Brian and I will do some more huddles here in the near future because things are just uh, just crazy out there. But before we go, Brian, if folks are intrigued, they want to learn more about what you folks are doing over there at Ally, maybe they want to check out the playbook. Uh, where should they go? What should they do? Well, uh, I had a, a little guest come on up and kind of surprise me. He actually kind of scared me today. <laughs> my my son, my son, and his first name is Wyatt, and I want to let him know that Wyatt, uh, can you can you say hi to everybody out there? Hi. And can you say goodbye? Thanks for listening. All right. And that's going to be it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. If you'd like to get a hold of me, like send the questions. And Mark, we definitely need to do another huddle up soon. Uh, Please send them to theoptionsguy at invest.ally.com. That's theoptionsguy at invest.ally.com. I hope to have a huddle, huddle soon. And in the meantime, may all the options that you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. 
select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Bottom line is, is people. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> hey, Wyatt. <laughs> you scared that daddy. He surprised you. You scared the heck out of me. Good yeah. job, Wyatt. Keep it up. <laughs> all right. I got my headphones on so you can't come talking to me. All right, buddy. Say hi, Mark. Hello, Mr. Wyatt. How are you? I've heard good things about you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You scared the That's piss funny. out of me. We should leave that one in. That's good. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Wyatt. <laughs> Wyatt, you have to go back downstairs. Okay, bud. Oh, I might that have was great. To take that, was <laughs> that actually scared me. That okay, one second. He's one second. Stealthy, you're raising a little stealthy ninja there. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, he left. He left. <laughs> you know, I have a tiny home in the backyard. You know that, do you? Do you? Don't you? I think you said that right. Yeah. Yeah, so that so um, usually I'm completely by myself, but he my back's to the door and I got the headset on, so I didn't hear him coming at all. And he likes to try to scare me. <laughs> Normally, I see it coming a mile away. <laughs> that was great. Uh, all right, uh, all right. So I forgot where you were. I think you're talking about your your uh, your thing you just put out to the to the, to oh, the clients. Okay. Okay. So 